Hello, this is Trevor from Telecommunications Training. Today we're going to be talking about modems, routers, and switches. Today many people call the device that your ISP would leave at your home, which your computer would be connected to, many people will call that a modem. Uh, some people might refer to it as a router. And another term you may hear every once in a while is the word switch. While a lot of people are quite confused as to which one it is, understandably so, because all three terms are being used and they're all correct in a way. But that's what I'm here to explain to you. What is the router, what is the modem, and what is the switch? On this slide, we have a picture of a modem. And right beside it, we have a picture of a router uh, with a switch incorporated into that router as well. First of all, we're gonna be talking about the modem and then afterwards, we're gonna talk about the purpose of the switch and the router. Here in this slide, we're gonna be talking about the modem. But in order for you to get a full understanding of exactly what the modem does and how it does it, we, I have to explain to you how the entire internet line work. Let's start at the top and work ourselves right through this entire design. Now we have the internet and the internet sends out a digital signal to the DSLAM. The DSLAM stands for Digital Subscriber Line Access Multiplexer. Now this signal this digital signal is converted from a digital signal to an analog signal. The signal coming from your telephone switch is an analog signal. So the two signals are multiplexed together and then modulated and sent across the telephone line as one modulated signal with both your telephone and your internet information. Once these signals are received here at the wall jack, a splitter is plugged in to the wall jack. This splitter have both your internet information and your telephone information coming in. So it splits the two, sending the telephone information in one direction and the internet information in the other. On this side, you'll plug your modem in where the internet information is and your telephone on the other side. If this is not used, you'll get interference between the telephone and the modem information, so you would not have a very good internet line. Once the modem is plugged in and powered up, what happens here is that this analog information is received by the modem and is converted back to a digital signal and sent off to your computer. Now, once this modem is powering up, um, you're going to get a flashing synchronization light on the modem. This light could be many different colors depending on the manufacturer. I just use a blue color here, but it could be a flashing blue light, could be a flashing orange light, could be a flashing green light. But in whatever case, it's a flashing light. Now this may flash for about a minute um, before it goes solid. And when this light goes solid, it means that the DSLAM and the modem are synchronized. So they're talking. So you have communication between the two devices now. So at this point is when this information here is, the analog information is changed to digital and sent off to your computer. Now the second thing I want to talk about is the IP address. Now the IP address is sent from your provider. They assign an IP address to your modem. So this IP is sent to your modem. Now, on a modem, there's only one Ethernet connection for any device. In this case, I have a computer connected. With only a modem connected, you can only have one device. And this device would be using your public IP address assigned to you by the provider. Um, once this IP address is assigned to your computer, you would be able to bring up a browser and surf the internet. Now, uh, there are a few problems with this type of design. The first one is 
um, as I said earlier you can only want use one computer um, you if you have a, a, a home and like most homes you need you have two or three computers and you have like um, iPhones and uh, PlayStation whatever you may have you can't use them all you can have use is one device on this particular design um, the other problem is that you have no security whatsoever you are fully open to attack because you have no firewall there's anyone could attack your computer from the outside so um, I, I heard the analogy once um, that people who use this type of design is much like driving a car without insurance you basically drive and hoping that nothing happens you know in this case you connect your computer and you're hoping that no one attacks you but you know there's a very good chance that somebody would eventually so this is not a very practical design although it works like any other but that's the problems that you will have with this particular design on this particular slide everything is pretty well the same as the last slide except that we have added a router and a switch and this switch now has Wi-Fi capability we still have our same IP address which is now assigned to the modem as before this router now have a firewall you can protect your land from anyone from the outside intruding and hacking into your land so you could have a firewall here to protect your local area network um, all Wi-Fi um, devices uh, would be connected to your router using DHCP a DHCP server which is in the router now um, this DHCP server would be a, a, would be assigning IP addresses much like these IP addresses that got written down here to anyone that's connected and these IP are private IP addresses that cannot communicate onto the internet it is just for the local area network so of course there would be a user ID and a password assigned to your router so that you will give that to anyone that you want to have access to your network also there's a switch um, this switch is also built in to the router as you see that on the back of this router there are four Ethernet ports plus one other one this port here is where the internet signal goes in from your modem so this modem here would be now connected to this router through this port and now all of these this signal goes into the router it goes through the firewall and the DHCP server and then it goes through the switch and these ports here are switch ports in a local area network like all your computers and printers are never connected to a router they are always connected to a switch and then that switch is connected to a, a router uh, in some cases the, the router is separate like a total separate device in this particular case the router is incorporated into the switch so it's all one device as you can see here this antenna here this is actually a Wi-Fi antenna to broadcast your Wi-Fi signal as I was talking about back here um, so if you look at all of these computers here they all given IP addresses 192.168.2.2.2.3 and 2.4 and if you look at the router is also given an IP address 192.168.2.1 if you take a close look you'll see that all the octets are the same except the last digit so because this is how you keep everything within that network so everything is within the same network so all of these devices can speak to each other if I should change one number within the first three octets all of a sudden this device that I'm changing on for instance would not be able to communicate with any of these other devices like this guy here wouldn't be able to print on this printer if I change um, say for instance if I change this 2 to a 3 or the 8 to a 7 or whatever any one of these digits um, within the first three octets wouldn't be able to communicate with the printer so that's basically how um, local area networks work the the DHCP server assigns all of these IP addresses 
each one of these computers would also be assigned the gateway IP and the gateway IP is necessary in order for these computers to get back, back onto the internet. Um, the moment you put a URL into the browser the the switch knows that you're trying to get onto the internet. It would route you through the router's gateway back through this IP address and onto the internet. Now just a quick recap of what we've learned so far about modems, switches, and routers. Modems receive analog modulated information, then demodulate that information, and then they change it back to a digital signal. Now, we talk about switches and what they do. Switches is always part of the local area network. It connects uh, a local area network together. You don't use any other device, but back in the old days, we used to use hubs, but 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 switches are so much better than, than a hub. Uh, you don't get as many collisions. So a switch is the best product to use to connect a local area network today. So, but there's one thing that we didn't touch on much. We talk, we talk about routers and we talk about the fact that it has a DHCP server in the router itself and, and but we, we didn't talk about much about routers. What I want to mention about routers right now, what routers is used for primarily is to connect networks. You you'll always use a router between networks. So here we have one network from the modem back to the internet with one type of IP address here. We have another network, a local area network, which is, which is connected by the switch. And lastly, we have the router in between these networks. So the router's main goal is to connect these networks. What we have within the router here is an IP address, which is able to communicate with the local area network because it's, it has the same octets, 192.168.2.1. Uh, once the first three octets are the same, it will be able to communicate with the network. Now, on the other side of the router, we have the public IP address, which will be used to communicate through the modem back to the internet. So you see, the, the router is connecting to both networks and passing the information through. So the purpose of the router is to connect networks. It's to connect one network to another. That's what routers are used for. So now you should have a full understanding of exactly what a modem does, what a router does, and what a switch does. This is how a modem router switch work. In some cases, you might find a modem, the router, and the switch as all separate devices. In some cases, you may find a modem separate and the, both the router and the switch together. And in some other cases, you may find all of them together, both the modem, the router, and the switch, all within one box. And this is the most popular format today. Most ISPs or any modem that you buy, uh, you would probably find that it's a modem router switch that you're buying. Uh, that's the most popular format today. But I must say that having a modem, a router, and a switch all separate do give you much more flexibility and much more control to control your network. Uh, for instance, if the modem should go defective, all you have to do is replace the modem. You don't have to worry about replacing the router. If the router goes, you just replace the router. And if the switch goes, you just replace the switch. So you have a lot more control over your network when it's all separate. But when it's all together, it's more convenient as well. So for homes, a lot of home users rather have just one box and it's nice and simple to just plug in their computers or whatever to that one box. So this is what most ISPs would assign to homes. Now for businesses, uh, most IT people rather have the flexibility so they would actually rather it be all separate with a separate modem a separate router and a separate switch my name is trevor hope this training has been informative and thank you for watching